Welcome to the subject of VLSI Design and Technology. I am Professor Minakshi Pancha from Electronics and Telecommunication Department, Parvathipai Ganga, Moji College of Engineering, Vogoli, Pune. So in this lecture, we will going to we will going to see about why we should learn the subject VLSI Design and the Technology. What are the learning objective of this subject? And the university scheme and what list of the books they have provided for the reference purpose and the detail about the syllabus, what they have given to study purpose and brief explanation about each unit and study material, what type of study material required for scoring the exam in the examination. So at the end of the lecture, I am going to share all the study material required for the understanding of subject. So let's start from the university scheme. According to the university scheme, there are two exams are going to be held. First exam was in some exam. And this was going to conduct for the 30 months. And next exam is NSEM exam. This exam will be going to conduct for 70 months. Then there is no term work mentioned in the syllabus. See, this is the snapshot of your syllabus. These are the subject they have given for study purpose. And our subject is VLSI Design and Technology. See here, they have mentioned they are going to conduct 30 marks in some exam. And in some exam is going to conduct for the 70 marks. Total 100 marks examination is going to have. And up to 3 credit points you are going to earn by this subject. Let's see the books prescribed and reference purpose by the university. These are the list of the books. As for the syllabus, these are the reference books we have to refer for the refer to understand the subject. Let's see syllabus and description and details of each unit given by the university. In unit number one, we are going to see what are the HDL design and in this, what are the learning objective, data types, entity and architecture of HDL design and its types, sequential element. Each things we are going to each all things we are going to learn in unit number one. In unit number two, which is digital design and issue, in this unit, we are going to learn sequential synchronous machine design and noise margin, fan out, skew timing consideration, its hazards, what are the cloud distribution for the sequential synchronous machines, and the supply and ground forces and power distribution techniques, all these things we are going to see in the unit number two. In the unit number three, we will see the PLD architecture and its application. What are the design flow of PLD architectures, devices, and what are the specification and applications of PLD? And there is Field programmable gate array architectures is also there and their features and specification and application we are going to see in this unit number three and simulation and synthesis tools is also available to see in this unit number three. In the unit number four, we are going to study the digital CMOS circuits by using MOS. For example, NMOS and PMOS, 
what are we are going to design and what devices we are going to learn that is cmos inverter and such many device we are going to see in this unit number 4 with the power dissipation and its features and its effects these all things we are going to learn in this unit number 4 in the unit number 5 we are going to study about application specific integrated circuit devices what are the design flow and its specification and simulation and its characteristics and details about its features all the things we are going to learn in this unit number 5 unit number 6 its name is vlsi testing and analysis all the things we have learned up to here we are going to test here the testability part is also essential so what are the types of fault will be types of fault will be occur in this process and what types of design should be need with the guideline and what are the models and its faults we will see and what is the pattern generation of the circuits all the things we are going to learn in this unit number 6 so let's start from the unit number 1 it's named as hdl design so first see what introduction of hdl and why hdl is first see why hdl is required first of all hdl means hardware description language hdl means i'm taking you hdl hdl means hardware description language hdl means hardware description language why which is why we have to use this hardware description language is a computer aided design tool which in short we will call cad tool for the modern design and synthesis of the digital system the recent study advances in semiconductor technology continue to increase the power and complexity of the digital system so due to their complexity such system cannot be realized using discrete integrated circuits so they are usually realized using high density programmable chip such as application specific integrated circuits and field programmable gate array and also require soft for using for all things we will require soft sophisticated cad tools so hdl is an integrated part of such tools which offers the designer very efficient tool for implementing and synthesizing design on the chip the designer uses hdl to describe the system in a computer language that is similar to several several commonly used software languages such as c but in the hdl debugging the design is very easy since the packages implement simulator and test benches also the two widely used hardware description languages are hdl and verilog there are two widely used hardware description language one is called vhdl and other one is called verilog but in our syllabus they have mentioned vhdl only so we will see the whole details about vhdl since each languages is equally implemented these two languages vhdl vhdl and verilog they have equally implemented in both academic and industry and and the hdl is must have tool for modern digital design these two major hardware description languages called vhdl and verilog both are popular among in the industry and academy 
so first we will see the history about the vhdl so vhdl stands for very high speed integrated circuit v vhdl vhdl very high speed very high speed integrated circuits in short it is also called as v h s i c very high speed integrated circuit which is also called as vhi vhsic hardware description language HDL itself have two types of languages. HDL languages, one is VHDL and another one is Verilog. VHDL is nothing but very high speed integrated circuit hardware description language. Let's see history of, about the VHDL. The VHDL was developed in 1980s under the program under the this VHIC, VHSIC program. In this program, a number of high-tech companies were in, involved. One program has to be uh, held in the 1980 century and that name of the program is VHSIC. On that program, the number of companies were involved in the designing purpose of these chips for US Department of Defense. So at that time, each company use its own primitive hardware description language. The each company which is having its own hardware description language. So moreover, these primitive, the company based languages provide the researcher with a only gate level design. So they did not support the large scale design and also prevent these companies from un unifying their effort in the developing this chip. So need for the standardized and extensive hardware description language was generated. To meet these needs and a researcher team from the three companies, the named as IBM, Texas and Instrument, these companies are involved by the, are involved and was an assembled, assembled by the Department of the Defense and introduced to be developed a standard for powerful hardware description language based on the tools. The team that is the team involved in these three companies, like IBM, Texas, and Instrument, which which produced a first publicly available standard VHDL version called 7.2 in 1987. A wide variety of companies, especially those who were involved in the developing this very high speed integrated circuit chips extensively implemented their version in their designs. The standardization of the language, however, they were not enough to satisfy the design requirement for such wide variety of the company companies. So in 1986, the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers in the short form, which is called as IEEE was tasked with globally, globally standardizing the language. So finally, IEEE comes. I, IEEE. So finally, IEEE, Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineer was 
tasked with the globally standardizing and language standardizing of this language so in 1987 the ieee completed their mission and added a several enhancement to the language the result was ieee standard of 1987 version of the vhdl which has also recognized by the american national standard institute the official reference and manual of this version is available from ieee in 1993 so in 1993 vhdl was updated and more features were be added the result of this update was ieee standard 1993 standard is 1993 the language described in this 1993 version is the vhdl one of the major enhancement of this language was introduced of the several packages that added important features one of these packages is called istd underscore logic underscore 1164 which is added seven additional logic level to the existing two level logic 0 and logic 1 Nowadays, VHDL is a very popular design tool among the industry and academia. Additional tool have been added to the languages, such as graphic-based simulator, and that allow the user to interact graphically on the screen with the simulator to the compile simulator to compile, simulate, test, and verify the design. And also, an analog extension to the language is also underway. so these are the introduction and history about the vhdl design and its technology so let's see structure of the vhdl design model what are the structure and of its model the vhdl model follow the generally structure of software languages such as c the model has a source code that is written in high level language style the text editor supplied by the hdl packages vendor can be used to write the model or it can be written using external text editor and imported to the hdl packages by copy and paste the most recently introduced feature in the hdl packages allows automatic generation of hdl code from the c so vhdl has somewhat different structure than the verilog but in but, but in according to our syllabus vhdl structure and we are going to discuss about vhdl structure so what are the structures of vhdl and model let's see now the vhdl model has two major constraints entity and architecture including library library has mentioned i have explained about the library which library they have given see they have provided the library i typically here for example here i have shown this is a small example of this is the small example of program half adder here this part is a library this is the library which was provided by ieee in ieee international electrical and electronics engineers so these they have finally updated with a library that is called std logic underscore 1164 this is the library so except the library the structure include two main parts one is a entity and another one is a architecture so what is the entity let's see entity entity declares the input output of the system to be described and 
and is given a name of identifier identifier by the user this is our program so how we can identify this program we should give name so here entity include the name of the program this is the entity of the architecture here entity should and also entity declares the input output of the signal for example this is the our digital circuit for example this is and gate we are going to perform this operation so for doing and operation we have two input terminal and one output terminal these are input terminal a and b one is the output terminal y so y is equal to a dot b so for example if we are considered a simple and gate operation these entity contains the information about all the input and output of the circuit in half adder a b is the inputs and sum carry is the output so entity what include entity which declares the input and output of the signal of the system and which is given name or identifier by the user the vhdl is case insensitive the vhdl is a case insensitive case insensitive vhdl is case in sensitive case insensitive means the two names like a half adder and other half adder for example i have mentioned here two name i will mention here one name is Out, underscore adder, and other name is here. I have mentioned the two name of the entity. One is half adder, and other half adder. The first name, which is initialized by the capital H, and second one is initialized initialized by the small H. so case insensitive means the vhdl has not affected by these change change cases it will consider same as a bound it will consider same bound it will treated same as the name the name should start with the alphabetic letter always the name should be start with alphabetic letter keep it in mind the name should be always we should we start with always the name of the entity should be start with the alphabetic letter and can include special character and include special character like underscore the declaration include the name and types of the input and output of the system this is the declaration here this is the name of the entity this is the name of the entity and these are the declaration these are declaration of entity we are declaring the input output are called as input port here input output so we will declare in a port in is nothing but input port out is nothing but output port and they are a signals the name of the port is 
user selected and it is it has same requirement as entity name these two ports are selected by the user these input output can be selected by the user and this is also required as name so this is the example of the entity of the half adder here the half adder is a name this is very essential the vhd is vhdl language is a case insensitive so it will treated if you are uh, initialize the h in a capital letter then it will treated as same there is not make any difference for it and declaring for declaration is also essential here in is nothing but input port and out is nothing but output port so these should be very essential for the declaration parts in an entity and here carry is also output the word entity is a predefined word the name of the entity is half adder and this name is a user selected this name is user selected you can give any name and it does not convey any information about the system this name does not convey any information it's just an identifier it's just for the identify purpose the entity could have been given any other name the vhdl does not know the entity half adder describes the half adder simply by its name the entity shows in the previous example this example has two input port and two output port the entity to shows in this example which is having two input port and two output ports the word port is a predefined which is also predefined and the name of the input port are here a and b and there are and there must be followed by the colon after the input name there must be followed by a colon and the predefined word in instant in instantial the mode of the port as an input in is the instantial word of the mode of the input it will assign us it will assign a b are these two ports are input ports for the details on the port mode the type of these input is a bit and determine the followed value the signals a and b can take the type bit allow the signal to take either a logic 0 or logic 1 there are a several other types such as a std logic real integer etc et the entity also has two output port one is sum and another one is carry here sum and carry they are declared as the output with the predefined word out predefined word out and their type are bits the order that the input and output ports are written inside the parentheses Is, these are these all the port declaration. It should be include in between the parentheses. the output port could be have been listed before the input port first before assigning the output port we should assign first input ports after that assigning the input we should refer, we should assign the output port the last time of the entity the last line of the entity's code use the predefined word and and ends 
the entity the name of the entity can follow the word end as in the half adder or the name of the entity can be omitted like the only end is written the semicolon is an important character in a hdl and it is used as separator similar to carry carriage written characteristics used in c language for example the port statement can be written here here after assigning the after assigning the input output ports after completing the port declaration it should be end with the end statement here it should be end with the end statement with the name of entity port here we have started the entity with the name of half adder and after we will assign or declare the ports after declaring ports we we completed with the semicolon after semicolon end half adder is should be written after executing this instruction this instruction the entity part will be omitted here the entity part will be omitted and the carriage written in between the statement does not convey any information it is a semicolon and that signal a new statement the semicolon is nothing but the next statement is a new statement the architecture so now see about the architecture let's see the what are the architecture architecture include detail about relationship between input and output of the system these architecture includes the relationship between input and output of the system in term of and gate here a b c so in term of and gate this architecture view the relationship between input and output so what is the relationship between here here output y is equal to a and b so this relationship will be declared here in the architecture here this is the example of half adder so sum is a x or b and carry is equal to a and b so this will shows the input output relationship in this entity part and it must be bound bound to an entity these things should be bound to the entity here i have taken the input terminal name a and b the same name should be considered here in the architecture if we have taken the input of half adder terminals a b and here we have written the sum is equal to c d then it will not consider the same things should be bound to the architecture each architecture can be bound only one entity each architecture can bound only one entity for example if we have mentioned two entity here then you are these two entity information you are writing here then it will not considered the one architecture will bound with only single entity but each architecture can be bound only single entity the entity illustrated has two input port of type bit and two output port of the types of the port are bit the architecture is declared by the predefined word here architecture is a predefined word we have to declare like this only as the entity the architecture is also predefined word and followed by user selected name after the architecture we have to followed by user selected name that is half adder and 
this name follows the same name selecting guideline in the entity this name is also should be same as guideline given by the entity in this name is followed by the predefined word of this name should be followed by predefined word of this is also predefined word here entity is a predefined word is and architecture and of is these are the predefined word which should be which should be same only user option is the name this only we can select according to us or named according to user programmer rest of things will be predefined words cannot change it so binding here means that the information listed in the entity is visible to the architecture here i have mentioned that one architecture should be bind with one entity only what's the meaning of binding is nothing but whatever the information is listed in the entity that in that same information should be visible in the architecture the architecture recognize only those information that declared named entity such as the name types what are the types that have mentioned in the entity and what are the predefined word must be written there so architecture body always start with the predefined word begin so this body so this body always start with the begin after begin we should mention the relationship between the inputs and output and after that begin it should be followed by the statement that details the relationship between the inputs and outputs the body of architecture include always two statements that is that these two hyphens signal that are commented follows here the signal assignment statement there are two statement described here we can assign the statement here see after assigning one statement here the comment can be followed like statement 1 statement 1 statement 2 so after assigning the signals or in relationship between the input and output there are two assignment is there one for sum and another for array one for sum and another one carry so you, you can mention the information or statement name by putting these two dash statement after that you can write here this architecture shows in the screen which which, which is describes the of adder operation here the sum is sum is here sum is exclusive operation of a and b and carry is and operation of a and b and after that the architecture is closed by predefined word end the name of the architecture can follow by end if desired so leaving the blank lines it is allowed in the model also space between two words or at the beginning of the line are also allowed so after declaring the 
statement after declaring the relation statement about sum and carry we should end with the predefined word end and you can continue with the name of the architecture here another name we have considered architecture data of half adder so we have considered the name of architecture here data which here is the data architect architecture data of this is of is also predefined word of this half adder and after writing is also predefined word and after that we should begin with a begin statement and after declaring statement we can comment it or we can provide the statement also by putting these two hash symbols and after completing this task we can end we should end with the end statement after end we can follow by the name of the architecture this is optional this one is an option so these this is the in structure of hdl model each program of the vhdl any program should contains these three part one is the library second one is entity and third one is the architecture so this is enough for the day so in the next lecture we will see the what are the ports types in the vhdl here we have mentioned in this video like a b r input ports and sum and carry is a output port and there are many options like a buffer and in out so this port structure with this ports of vhdl we will study in the next lecture and also we will study the operator of the and also we will study the operator what is the command we should write for and operation and what are the commands we should write for addition and arithmetic operation so those operator we will see in the next lecture so this is enough for the day thank you